Hello everyone. Hey, this is Pastor Terry here, and I want to welcome you to another Wednesday evening Bible study at Summit Church Fenton. I'm so glad you joined me this evening, and I'm looking forward to getting into the Word of God with you. Hey, tonight I want to talk to you about how to be successful in life, or how to make it in life. And uh, that's something I think everyone wants to be, is successful in life. So we're going to go into the Word of God and and, and uh, talk about some things that will uh, will cause us to be successful, okay? So let's go to Luke, the eighth chapter. I'm going to read a couple of verses here. Luke chapter eight, verse 22. Now it happened on a certain day that Jesus got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he even commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. And so here you have a situation where, where Jesus gave his disciples a direction. Uh, you know, Jesus, the Son of God, gave a direction. And uh, he told them to launch out and, and go to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. And uh, as they went along, there was a storm came up. And, you know, we just read it. They... They, they were filling with water and, and they, were getting, they were in jeopardy. They were getting ready to sink and, uh, and so on and so forth. And, uh, uh, you know, from these verses, though, I, I want to go in and look at, at them more in detail with you. And from these, we can find out how to make it to the other side, how to make it in life, how to be successful in life. And so... The first thing I would tell anyone if they ask me, you know, how to be, you know, Pastor Terry, how can I be successful in life? The first thing I would tell anyone is find out what God's plan for your life is. Find out what God's plan for your life is. You know, uh, as, as little kids, I think all of us have been asked, you know, what do you want to be? You know, we were asked when we were kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, and you know, some will say, I want to be a policeman, or I want to be a fireman, or I want to be a baseball player, or, or you know, whatever, whatever the case. But, you know, really, it's, it's not about what we want to be. It's about what God has made us to be. And you see, we have to, to seek Him and find out what He wants us to be, what He wants us to do. And then, you know, the, and that's the first step towards being successful in life you know, and not just being successful for a little while or for a few years, but I mean successful throughout your whole life uh, is to find out from God what it is that he wants you to be, what he has called you to be, what he has made you to be, what he wants you to do. And so number one thing to be successful in life is you have to find out from God his plan for your life. And you do that by but through prayer and, and 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 seeking him and study of his word and and uh, and, and he'll show you he'll let you know he, he'll guide you through that inward witness on the inside what what I call peace versus no peace you know I'm not saying that, that he's going to speak to you audibly I'm not saying that at all but what I am saying is uh, and 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 you know you look in the Bible. You know, I point over here because I have my Bible right here. But you look in the Bible; some people God did speak to. You know, He He did, but you know, in a you know, in a very dramatic way. But most people He doesn't speak to that to to that way. It's just through prayer and and meditating on Him and and spending time with Him and and uh, uh, you know, He'll He'll let you know through that inward witness that that peace versus no peace, uh, what it is. Uh, that, that he's made you to be what he wants you to do. And so the first step to being successful in life is, is hearing from God. And, uh, you know, you need to hear from God before you launch out. I mean, the disciples here, 
they heard from God. They heard from Jesus before they launched out to go to the other side. Okay, they, they didn't just have a bright idea. Oh, hey, you know, we're going to just go to the other side of the lake. No, they didn't launch out until Jesus gave them that direction, until he gave them that command. He said, let us cross over to the, to the other side. So they heard from God and then they launched out. Uh, but, you know, I, I want to just spend a few moments on this. You know, many people launch out. Now, listen carefully. Many, uh, you know, Christians, those who have their faith in the Lord Jesus, okay, children of God, they launch out uh, in their life to do this, that, or the other, whatever it may be. They launch out without hearing from God, without getting his plan for their life. And I tell you what, that's not a good road to go down, you know, to, to start down a road without getting direction from the Lord and just, you know, just, just, you know, having a bright idea or whatever the case, uh, that's a dangerous road to walk. Uh, you don't want to launch out until you've heard from the Lord, you know, what it is he wants you to do, what road he wants you to take, you know, in life. Uh, you know, Psalm 127 verse 1 says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. You know, uh, you know I've watched this over the years, you know, uh, sometimes folks will, will get a get an idea that they want to, uh, you know, build a, a certain house or do a certain thing, and and uh, uh, I know, and and it's just their idea, and, and the thing, you know, it, it flops or it's just marginally successful for a while, and then it flops. I know in my life, um, you know, I'll talk about the building of of my house. Uh, I had, uh, I had, I, I live on the piece of property where I grew up. And uh, from the time I, I was a little boy, I just knew on the inside. I didn't hear, you know, the voice of God. I didn't, uh, you know, have an angelic appearance or anything like that. I just knew in my heart that, that I was supposed to build a, ba build a house uh, on the land where I grew up. And it, it was a, a large piece of property. Uh, you know, and that, that my mother owned. And, uh, but I just, I just knew that I was supposed to build a house on it. And, uh, as, as I went along, as years went along, as I got older, I, there were a couple of times where, you know, I, timing is everything with the Lord. If you want to be successful and uh, successful in life, timing is everything. And, and so there were different times where, uh, where I, I, I attempted, my wife and I, we attempted to build a house and uh, on, on this particular piece of land. And, uh, and it just, things never went right. You know, this fell apart or that fell apart or, you know, this plan that we had or that, you know, it just, it, a couple, I, I, there's like two, maybe three times that we tried to build a house. And I mean, it was going nowhere fast. But you know what? We just waited. And, and in the process of time, the time came where we were supposed, where, where it was, it, I mean, it was time, it was God's timing for us to build our house. And let me just tell you this. Now, there were some challenges in it, all right, don't misunderstand me. But I tell you what, it, 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 things happened, and I could, I could sit here for an, for an hour and talk to you about the different supernatural things that happened that God did for us to, to get us our dream home. It was, and and it was, it was a home that we would we would have never built. And years ago, if we'd have built it, it would have never turned out looking like it looks right now. It would have just been a fraction of what it of what it what it turned out to be. And and actually, when uh, long story short. You know, when, when we stood out on the driveway and looked at it, my wife and I, when it was completed, we looked at it, we, we, we thought that that's, that's not the house that, <laughs> that's not the house that we were going to build. No, it, it was the house that God had for us. But it, it was very supernatural. I mean, it, it, I mean, from the time the architect got involved to the time we, we looked at it, the finished product, I mean, it was just God. But see, we, we, I had that in my heart from the time I was a, was a child, 
but we, we, we waited, you know, that God wanted me to build a house here on this land, but we waited for God's timing, got his direction when we did, his hand was in it. It would, it, it would, now there were some challenges. Don't misunderstand me there. I mean, there were some building a house in St. Louis County is not the easiest thing in the world to do. And you start talking about getting the water in this. I could talk to you about getting the water in the sewer in here. I mean, that was, that was, that was a move of God there just getting that for us. And uh, it didn't cost us a penny. Uh, anyway, it, but, but uh, it, it, it was God's timing. It was his plan. It was, and, and when, when we got done with it, it was, I mean, it's, my wife and I looked at it and said, like I already said, that is, I mean, that's not the house we thought we were going to build. It was far it exceeded anything that we'd ever thought. I mean, it was very supernatural. But you see, we got the plan of God. We waited on the timing. And then and I sit in, in the office here today. It's, it's a beautiful home that God's blessed us with, okay? And much more that I, I, I could say about it. But, but, but the Lord was in it, see? And, and this verse says here, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Now, of course, God didn't come down here with, you know, with with uh, bricks and stone and, and, and wood and cement and, and do it himself. You know, we had to hire people to do that. That's not what this is talking about. It, it's talking about God being in, in the plan. And unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless he's in it, see, unless he's he's orchestrating it, then, then they labor in vain who, who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, uh, the watchman stays awake in vain. You know, I've got, I've got a burglar alarm on my house, got a burglar alarm on my church, and, and we do the natural things, you know, but ultimately I'm trusting God to guard my house and my church. See, you want God in it. And uh, uh, so we do the natural things, but then, but then you want God in it, you see. And uh, you want God in it, know that he's in the plan before you ever start, okay? So we need to hear from God. Uh, and, you know, I, I just want to read from my notes here. Uh, you know, you must not launch out. Let me give you some reasons why you shouldn't launch out on, on, or, or start to walk down a certain road or, you know, you know what I'm talking about, start to do a certain plan or whatever. Some reasons you, 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 you shouldn't launch out. You shouldn't do something just because it's something you really wanted to do. I mean, like I just told you about building of my house, it's something I really wanted to do, but and I tried to do it a few times and never worked out, as I already said. But you don't do things just because you really want to do them or just because you've always wanted to do them. You know, it, there again, if God's not in it, it it's not going to go right. It's going to flop, ultimately. Okay, but a lot of people, you ask them, why did you do such a thing? You know, when it, when it just, the thing flopped. And I'll ask them, why did you do it? Well, it's something that we always wanted to do. Well, but was God in it, you see? And, uh, uh, you know, God's not trying to keep you from things that you always wanted to do. But, but you know, he, but if you do what he wants you to do, the thing that he wants you to do so supersedes the thing that you want to do that if you'll do what he wants to do, you won't even think anymore about, about, about the thing you wanted to do because you'll be so happy doing what he wanted you to do. I don't know if that made any sense, but I think it did. It's like that house. I mean, if we'd built that house, the house that we tried to build a couple of few times, it would just have been a fraction of what, um, what God had for, for my wife and I. You see what I'm saying? So don't do something just because it's something that you really want to do. Or, or don't do something just because somebody else did, did it. You know, a lot of times folks flop because they do something that they saw someone else be successful at, and but, but they do it themselves and it flops. Why? Well, God was in it for that other person, but he wasn't in it for you. See, you know what I'm saying? Now, he's not a respecter of persons. It's just he had a different plan for your life. I think about this, you know, when the uh, Israelites crossed the, Moses, you know, led them across at the hand of God, led them across the Red Sea, you know, the Israelites passed through, and then the book of Hebrews, I think, brings it out that the Egyptians, you know, Pharaoh and his army came behind, they tried to cross the Red Sea, because they saw the the Israelites do it, but guess what happened to the to Pharaoh and his army? They got drowned. 
See, so you don't do something just because somebody else did it. You do something because God told you to do it. Uh, you don't do something just because there's a need. I, I've, I've already watched people, you know, they do something. Uh, to, to just meet a need. And then there's nothing wrong with meeting a need. I mean, we want to meet people's needs and help, 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 help people. But you don't, you don't do something just because you're trying to meet a need. I remember one time I was standing at the door greeting in my church after a service and there was a lady came up to me and she said, Pastor, I, I have a certain need. And she told me what it was and she, she had asked me to pray and I said I would. And, and, and she walked off and when she got about halfway up to her car, I just, because I, I could meet the need for her, I could, I, I could, I could do it, and I, I, I took off out the door, and I got about halfway to her. She had her back to me; she didn't see me coming, and the Holy Spirit just arrested me and I, and stopped me and said, "Don't, don't, don't go meet her need." That's what he said on the inside. I thought, "My goodness!" So I just obeyed him. About two weeks later, that lady came back through, greeting me at the door, and and she said, "Pastor Terry, you know, th you know, thanks for praying for me." I mean, you know, I told you two weeks ago about a certain need and, and then she told me what God did for her. And I tell you what, it was it was a hundred times. He met her need a hundred times more than I could ever met it. I, I could have helped her and met what she 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 needed all right, but but when but God did it a different way and just did a hundred hundred times more than what I could have did for her. Uh, but but you don't just do something because there's a need. You, 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 you find out from God if he wants you to do a certain thing. Uh, you don't do something just because somebody told you to do it or just because your parents think you should do something. Now, we ought to obey our parents. I'm not saying that, but a lot of times, you know, uh, you'll see kids that their parents want them to be a, like, a, like a, 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 an athlete. They just don't have that in their hearts. And a lot of times parents will push them a certain way and it, those things never do wind up up. up you know, very good in the end. You don't do something. Now, you respect your parents. You honor what they would tell you to do, all right, certainly. But but ultimately in your life, you have to find out what God has told you to do. You don't do something just because, you know, someone else tells you to do. Now, I use the example of your parents, but it applies to other people, certainly. And I've already seen people flop. And, and I ask them, well, why did you start that out, that project out to start with. And they say, well, so-and-so told me that, that, that they thought it'd be a good idea if I did that. Oh, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want any part of that. I mean, you want to be respectful of people, all right, but you don't do things just because somebody thought it'd be a good idea if you did it. You got to find out from God what he wants you to do. And, uh, and then certainly if you've been around the charismatic circles of church life, you know, uh, you know, I don't guess it goes on so much anymore. It, it may, but, uh, back in the seventies and eighties, you know, this, this personal prophecy, which you've got to be real careful with that. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, something I found out about personal prophecy, if God's in it, he's usually typically not always, but typically he's going to use someone that has some seasoning on them, before he'll ever have a personal prophecy for you. Particularly, he would use like your pastor or someone else who, who would have some sort of uh, oversight over you. Uh, I've watched a lot of people get messed up, particularly back 20 some odd years ago because they did something because so-and-so walked up to him after a church service and said, thus saith the Lord, you know, you need to, yea, verily do this or that or the other. And the people just went out and did it and it flops. And they said, well, Pastor Terry, I... They, they said, thus saith the Lord. You need to realize when people say, thus saith the Lord, it's not always the Lord thus saying. You need to understand that. And so don't ever do anything because someone prophesied it to you, okay? Ever. I mean, I don't care who it is, me or anybody else. You don't do anything just because somebody prophesied it to you. You do whatever you do because you found it out from the Lord yourself. Now, sometimes God will have you know, someone uh, uh, give you a word of a personal prophecy. But here's what I found. It'll always, if it's from the Lord, it'll always line up with his holy word. And it will, it, now watch this, and it will confirm what he has already put in your heart to start with, okay? So those are some reasons that you shouldn't launch out, okay? Uh, but if you launch out without hearing from God, you, now listen, if you launch out, Without hearing from God, you will eventually sink. 
Now, it may take many years. Sometimes people sink right away. But sometimes folks can go on in their own natural ability and their own natural talents a good long way. And God, in his great mercy, tries to help them as much as he, <laughs> as he can. But, uh, you know, you can only go on in disobedience so long. Or you can only go on in the, in, in the thing that God doesn't want you in so long. And you can go a long way with your talents. You really can. But ultimately, if God wasn't in it to start with, it'll eventually fail. Remember this. I heard a good minister say this years ago, that God only pays for what he orders. Think about that. And so be sure you've heard from God and then launch out. Now, once you've got God's plan and you know what he wants you to do, go ahead and launch out. Go ahead and launch out. But uh, let me tell you this. Let me give you a little helpful hint here. Anything God does tell you to do, it's going to take faith. It's going to take faith. And he's not going to give you all the details. Okay, it's not, he's not going to give you all the details. It's going to take faith. And whenever God tells you to do something, it's going to stretch you. You know, let me say it another way. It's going to take you out of your comfort zone. It's going to take you beyond your own natural abilities of what you can do. Because if you could do it, then you, <laughs> then you wouldn't need God. But it wouldn't take any faith. Let me say it that way. We always need God, but what I'm saying is, is if you could do whatever on your own, that, that you know, whatever it is on your own power, it wouldn't take any faith. That's a better way to say that. But when God asks you to do something or tells you to do something, it, it's it's going to take faith to do it. Again, if you could do it under your own power, it wouldn't take faith. But if God's in it, it's going to take faith. And it's going to stretch you outside of your comfort zone, and He will not give you all the details up front. I wish He would. But he doesn't. He doesn't. Because if he did, then it wouldn't take faith. And remember, it takes faith to please God. You say, what is faith? It's, it's hearing the word of God. And then faith is the believing part of it. The believing part of it. And then faith also acts. A-C-T-S. Acts. There's action. Okay, faith. See, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So you hear the word of God. You get the direction for your life. Okay. And uh, he doesn't give you all the details. Uh, then you, when, when he speaks to you, then you believe that you, you believe in your heart. But that's 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 faith right there. Believe it in your heart. But then faith also remember faith without corresponding action is dead. Faith then steps out and does the thing that he tells you to do. And, and frankly, that's really the hard part right there is stepping out because you don't have all the details, you know. And so the thoughts will, I mean, the thoughts will start coming. Well, what if I fail? What if I flop? What if I do this thing and it flops? Well, I like what one person said one time. What if you do that thing and it doesn't flop? What if you step out and it doesn't flop? I like what another excellent minister says. Uh, uh, she says this. She says, you won't find out until you step out. So a lot of times we're, the only way we're going to find out is we've got to step out. you know. And, uh, and it takes faith. It really does. But I tell you what, you hear from God. And you step out, you know, on his word, I tell you what, he won't let you sink. You know, it might look sometimes like you're going to sink, like it looked like those disciples were going to sink, but they didn't uh, because they had the word of God and they stepped out on that. You step out on the word of God. And uh, uh, I tell you what, you know, uh, uh, you, you go ahead and launch out. Even though you don't have all the details, you just, you just do it anyway. And, you know, uh, and, and ultimately, you won't sink. Now, I, you know, I think about Abraham. You know, he's known in the Bible as the father of faith. He stepped out. God told him to leave his house and, and his family and all of that. All of that, you know, and 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 he he stepped out. He he did. He, he and the Bible says he didn't know where he was going. He just got the the the, the word from God to, to leave his house and get away from his kindred, and and he did it. And then you can chronicle his life and, you know, he heard from God again and again and, and so on and so forth. But initially when God spoke to him, the Bible says he didn't know where he was going, just that God told him to go. And uh, I think about when my wife and I went to Ramah Bible Training Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, uh, uh, you know, I had a good teaching job. She had a good nursing job. We had just gotten married and all of that. But God spoke to our hearts. You know, we had we knew it was what he wanted us to do, and 
to uh, to to go to go to Bible school. And what did that what does that mean? That means we had to to resign from our jobs. We were both making pretty good money. We had to resign from our jobs and go to Tulsa where we had no guarantee of anything, you know? So I was looking at going from teaching a nice teaching job, teaching mathematics, to maybe having to make hamburgers at McDonald's. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you get what I'm saying. And I mean, you know, but the Lord said do it. And uh, her and I, we wrote a list. We had about 10 things on the list that we needed God to do for us down there or we were going to cut a flop. And, uh, and I, you think I, if you think I was nervous, you're right. I was nervous. I, I'm just as honest as I can be. And uh, uh, you had to deal with fear and all of that, but we obeyed God and we give him all the glory. But when we got down to Tulsa, you know, because uh, we we went down uh, several weeks ahead of us moving there and about a month ahead of time, I guess. And anyway, when we got down there, it was like, I mean, all 10 of those things, I mean, just like on a checklist, one, two, three, just checking them off, all, all 10 of those things, they, they were there. And I said to my wife, I said, Diane, I said, you know what? It looks like somebody came down here ahead of us and got everything ready for us. Well, uh, I mean, duh, it... It was the Lord. He's the one who sees ahead and makes the provision. He went, he went before us. He got everything ready. And those two years of our life, I got a teaching job at Tulsa Junior College, really a job I should have never got. I walked in. And I got hired on the spot, on the spot. That's, that's, that's unheard of. And <laughs> I mean, it just, and then I, I could go on with that. I mean, this some things happened with that job that I shouldn't have had that job, but God had it for me. See, because we had His plan, I give Him all the glory. And my wife, she, you know, she got hired just right over the phone, I believe it was, for a nice nursing job down there, and it fit our schedule just real, real good. You think about going somewhere, you need a, you need a good job, and and you're going to Bible school from eight to twelve every day. You need a good job, but you tell, go in there and you tell a guy you can't teach from eight to twelve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every day I'm not available till till about 12:30. You know, they hired me on the spot. <laughs> they gave me they gave me evening classes and and then and then that first summer came up. We were down there two years. That first summer came up and I needed more to do. That summer I I, I was you know I had a, my three classes to teach, but I needed I needed I needed some more for that summer and. I was thinking, well, I may have to go up to the McDonald's and fill out an application, you know, and the phone rings and, and I answer it. And it's a guy from a, it's one of the uh, math department heads from a, from Tulsa Junior College, but it was a different campus. And he said, uh, he said, you know, during the summer, I've got, I've got a math lab open here that I need somebody to cover. Uh, and, and, and here's what it pays. Would you be interested? <laughs> No, oh, would I be interested? Praise God. I said, I'll, I'll be right over to talk to you. And, and they hired me in there. And I mean, but it was God. It was God doing it. And, uh, but you got to hear from him. Then you got to launch out and step out. And then you'll find out if God was in it. But you know what? Here's the thing. Many Christians, now listen to this. Many Christians hear from God and they never do launch out. Now you think about that. Many Christians do, in fact, hear from the Lord, but they never do launch out. Now, you think about that. You see it in Acts, the first chapter, verse 8. The Lord says to the, to the people after he was raised from the dead, he said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit's come on you, and you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And it's interesting, if you go over to Acts, the eighth chapter, and the first verse, it says this, now Saul was consenting to his death. That was Saul, who would become Paul later, but he was at this time Saul, and he consented to Stephen's death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which uh, was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Now look at this. The Lord Jesus himself, standing there in person, after he was raised from the dead, told them to go out and to preach in these different areas. That's Acts chapter 1. Now we come over to Acts 8. That's about 8 to 10 years later. They still hadn't done what he said do. Now you think about that. 
they still hadn't done what he said to do. They still hadn't launched out. He told them to launch out here, go out and preach the gospel, and be witnesses to him, uh, for him. And they, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Eight, eight to 10 years went by and they're still there. They didn't do it. And so, well, a great persecution arose. And uh, that got them going. Because if you look at verse 4, Acts 8, 4, Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Now it's sad that it, it's sad that, that it took persecution to get them to obey God. Isn't that sad? It took persecution to get them to obey God and, and, and 8 to 10 years later. Well, let's, let's, don't, let's don't let it come to that in our lives, okay? Let's, let's just hear from God and then go ahead and launch out. But a lot of people, they hear from God. I'm talking Christians, you know, of course. They hear from God. They never do launch out. Uh, you know, and there's a couple of reasons for it. Um, you know, in, in that parable of the talents, remember that last, that last guy who was given the one talent? And, uh, and, and he went and hit it, you know, and buried it in the ground. And he, well, he didn't do anything with it, did he? Did, did he? He didn't, he, he just buried it. And when he was settling up accounts, you know, his account with the Lord, he, he just had that one talent. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, he says to the Lord, he says, because the Lord's questioning him, questioning him why he didn't do anything with his talent. And he said, I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, fear, fear will stop us from doing what God has called us to do. And, and I've learned this about fear. I mean, when, when you step out, you know, we just talked about it. When you step out in faith, fear is going to be right there. It, it just is. But uh, I like what Joyce Meyer, excellent minister of the gospel. She's, I think she's writing a new book now. She's, I think it's titled Do It Afraid. I think that's the case. I think that's the book she's working on now, whatever. But isn't that so good? I mean, we, you know, you know, look, we're not, God's not given us a spirit of fear, okay? We understand that. And, and fear is not of the Lord and all of that. We understand that. But we're human beings. And you see the apostle Paul was fearful at times. And, and uh, so I don't believe it's wrong to feel fear. I just believe that we shouldn't react to a situation based on fear. And, uh, and, and I've learned in my life is that when God tells you to do something, like, like quit your job and go to Bible school, you know, okay, there's some fear involved with that. We just talked, I just talked about that with you. But you do it, afraid. that's what I did. I did it, I did it afraid. And uh, I, I, you know, you can have, I like what one excellent minister said. He said this, he said, you can have, and I, I'm still chewing on this, but it's so true. You can have, faith in your heart while you got fear in your head. And you think about that. And so that's really what we're talking about here. You know, God tells us to do something. We have faith in our heart to do it, but yet there's fear in our head. Well, we just, we just do it, do it afraid and, uh, and just step on out there in the faith that's in our heart. And, uh, and then God will meet us. And then that fear will dissipate, praise God. But that, that guy with the talent, he, he didn't do anything with it because he was afraid. And then later on, the Lord calls that guy lazy. You know, sometimes people don't do things that God tells them to do because they're lazy. Because God doesn't ask us to do easy things. Like I said a while ago, we can do those easy things in our own power. When God asks us you know, to do something, it, it takes faith and it's going to take work. And he's stretching us beyond ourselves. A lot of people, I'm talking Christians, don't want to be stretched beyond themselves. They don't want to, they don't want to be stretched. They don't want to leave their comfort zone. And so they never do launch out. And, uh, uh, you know, you can see as you study the Bible that, that God has commissioned us to, to be industrious. And, uh, and, and when he, like I said, when he tells you to do something, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take more than your power. It's going to take his power, but to tap his power, you're going to need faith. And, uh, and so he tells you to launch out. Uh, it's going to stretch you beyond your comfort zone. It's going to take work. You can't be lazy. And, and you, you, you know, you may have fear in your head, but let that faith in your heart prevail and move on out there and do what he said do. Okay. And then, and then notice here, after you launch, now, this is helpful to know this now. After you launch out, so you've heard from God, he's told you what he wants you to do, and you've 
you know, you've, you've taken that step of faith and you've, you've launched out there, you can expect the devil to attack. You can expect the devil to attack. Again, in Luke, the eighth chapter, they launched out. This is verse 22, the end of the verse. But as they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. Notice a windstorm came down on the lake and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. Now the windstorm was of the devil. There's no doubt about that because later we'll see that Jesus rebuked it. But here's the thing you need to know. When you step out in faith to do what God's told you to do, you can know this. The devil is going to attack you. Guaranteed fact. The devil is going to attack you. Okay? And uh, you need to know that about the devil. The Bible says that if we're not, uh, it, the Bible says if we're ignorant of his devices, then he'll be able to take advantage of us. So I'm telling you about one of his devices when you step out. I mean, when I stepped out in faith to build the house back back here where I live, uh, you know, I, I talked about it a while ago, but hey, the devil attacked there. <laughs> Believe me, the devil attacked, all right? Now, I'm not going to go into all, all the details of that, but the devil attacked, you know? I mean, there was things with the county that we had going on, and 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 they said, the county said, you know, I couldn't bring the water in, uh, or what was it? I don't know all what it was, but it it was, it was, it, there were some messy things, let me just tell you, but uh, but God was in it, and, uh, and some of it, we did it with faith in our heart, fear in our head. But, uh, but, but we got through it all, you know, but there, you know, you go to build a house, particularly here in St. Louis County, Missouri, you got a lot of, uh, rules and regulations that you have to meet. I remember one, one thing with the, with the fire department when they came through, I mean, long story short, but we were ready to move in and, and fire, fire guy got off on us, on me. And, and that was just a terrible problem. You see, that was a dis. The devil was attacking. I'm not saying he was the devil, but the devil uses people. And so, so the, the different ordinances and then that fire, that fire inspector at the end, man, that was something else. And, <laughs> but, uh, but, but the devil will attack. He'll attack. He really will to try to stop the plan of God. But you just, just know that God's in it. And you just stay in it and just go right on down the road and make it to the other side. But you need to know that about the devil. When we built the church, you talk about an attack. I tell you what, you talk, I mean, building building the house was a piece of cake compared to building the church. You talk about, I mean, you talk about attack of the devil. I mean, he attacked, he attacked us on every side you can imagine. But we knew it was that God wanted us to do it. We knew he was in it. And we built the church at, at the at the hand of God, and he's provided for it, all these 25, 26 years now going going on, I guess, with what, 26 years, I guess. Isn't that something? But but the devil will attack. So what am I saying to you? When you step out in faith, I mean, I had people telling me, you can't build a church there. I had all, I even had the, the <laughs> I even had the worker at, at, uh, at the, the little gas station up the street from where the church is. I, I went in there and I was buying a soda and I just asked the a uh, girl working behind the counter, I just said, I just wanted to see if she'd heard about that church being built up the road there. And I said, do you know anything about that church being built up the road? She said, I don't know anything about it at all, except I know that that somebody came through here and said that they're never going to get that thing built. <laughs> I mean, I even had to work her at, at the sit-go telling me it couldn't be done. <laughs> but I could tell you a lot of other stories too. I mean, unbelievable stuff, but from the St. Louis County inspectors and all of that, just like what I dealt dealt with in building my house, but but worse, uh, on steroids. But praise God, it was a plan of God and, and we got through it. But you need to know when you, when you hear from God, you step out in faith, the devil will attack. You need to know that. It happened to Paul when he stepped out in that, in his, in the, in, as a missionary in his first missionary journey uh, first thing that happened to him was a saucer uh, uh, came against him. Remember that? And so, uh, but you know what? You just, Paul was in the in the plan of God. And I think he called blindness down on that guy, <laughs> on the devil. You know what I'm saying? On that guy that was yielding to the devil. So if we hear from God, we step out in, in faith, uh, you know, will prevail, okay? But with the, by the grace of God. Uh, and also it's interesting here, if you look at Mark's account of this story of them crossing over the this the 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 uh, uh, crossing over uh, to the other side, crossing over the the sea there, 
uh, in Mark 4, verse 38, when that, when that storm hits and they're taking on water and they're, they're in jeopardy, in jeopardy, I mean, I mean, you follow God, you follow the Lord, you do what he tells you to do, you're going to get in some jeopardy. <laughs> you just are. And I'm not talking about the game on television with Alex Trebek. I'm talking about you're going to get in some jeopardy. You're going to get in some sticky situations, some tough spots. You follow the Lord, you guaranteed fact, you're going to get in some jeopardy. You really, really are. It's going to look like you're going to sink, look like you're going to go under, look like you're going to drown and everything else and everything in between. Uh, and uh, But you won't if, if, if God's in it. But here uh, they come to him in Mark 4.38, when they're taking on water and they're about, and these, yeah, these guys are fishermen. I mean, you know, they're not, they're used to being out on the lake and so on and so forth and, and storms. And this is a tough storm. This was a storm attack of the devil. And uh, here's what they did. They came to Jesus and they said, do you not care? They woke him up. They woke him up. Okay. And uh, uh, they said, do you not care? Do you not care that we are perishing? Now, I don't know if they said it that way, but you know, master, don't you care? Listen to this. We've got to watch self pity. We've got to watch that when the devil attacks. When we, you know, when we obey God, we get out there doing what He's told us to do. The devil attacks, and then the, we got to watch the pity parties. Listen, I can tell you about that. I've thrown some of the best ones that's ever been thrown on planet Earth. Okay, <laughs> and uh, they've never done me any good. But uh, uh, you know, oh Lord, don't you care, Lord? I obeyed you. I heard from you. I obeyed you. And now I'm out here and, and look, it's this is this one's coming again me, that one's coming. Again. Don't you care? All that is is self-pity. God, and you know what? God does not like us to be in self-pity. He just doesn't. There's no faith in self-pity. None. Well, guaranteed, well, I'm saying guaranteed fact a lot tonight. But guaranteed fact. When you're in self-pity, you're not in faith. You cannot be in faith and in self-pity at the same time. Those two are not like peanut butter and jelly. They don't go together, okay? So you're either in faith or you're going to be, in, if you're in self, let me say it this way. If you're in self-pity, guaranteed fact, you're not in faith. And so, and we'll see these guys weren't in faith when uh, when they came and woke Jesus up. And, uh, you know, but, uh, uh, and, and let me tell you, you'll never make it. You'll never make it to the other side with that, with that self-pity attitude. Okay, so... If you're in self-pity out there, hey, snap out of it, all right? And uh, and let's step up here and just do what God's told us to do. He, he cares about us, and, and you're in jeopardy or whatever. Well, he told you He told you to go do whatever he told you to do. He knew that jeopardy would be there. He knew the devil would attack you, but, but we've got victory over the devil, you know, and God will be with you. Jesus was with these guys, all right? So, so get out of that self-pity and just go on and make it to the other side. But anyway, here, let's let's finish this up in Mark, Mark 4 here. Mark 4, uh, verse 39. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. So they wake him up. Mark 4, 39. Then he, Jesus gets up. He rebukes the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. So that's wonderful. So Jesus is there and he'll rescue us. And that's wonderful. He'll see us through to the other side. And, and, and he said he'd never leave us or forsake us. So let's always remember that. But now here's something else. Let's look at verse 40. But he so Jesus rebukes the wind and the sea and all that, and it calms. So, but then he, but then, then he turns to, you know, remember that slowly I turn. Well, that's an old joke from years ago. So then Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I'm convinced he said it just like that. I can't prove that he did, but I think he did. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Friends, the, con friends, the connotation here is, is that he expected them to do something about that storm. He had taught them about faith and about speaking to the mountain and so on and so forth. He would taught them about these things and they weren't putting these faith principles that he'd been teaching them into practice. And, uh, and so I think he was very stern here. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I, I guess I would say it this way, as I've studied this verse and meditated it, you know, this, this is kind of what I've gotten out of it over the years. Why are you so fearful? Why didn't you do something about the storm? 
Why'd you, you know, I've taught you all this uh, about faith and speaking to the mountain and, and all these things. Why didn't you do something about it? You know, I'm back here getting, getting some sleep here. And why didn't you do something about it? I think that was the connotation of it. Now, I can't 100% prove that, but I think that that was the connotation of it. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? We know he said that to him. See, uh, we, can, we should now listen to this, and, and then I'm going to close. Don't expect Jesus to do for us what he has already commissioned us and given us authority to do. I mean, let me say it again. Don't expect Jesus to do for us or don't expect Jesus to do something for you that he's already given you the, the, the power, the authority, and the commissioning to do. See, he'd already given these these guys that the, it's clear to me as I study the, the Bible that he'd given them, you know, at one time, remember, he gave them authority over, over, over sickness and demons and so forth. And they went out and they exercised that authority. I mean, so he wanted them to use that. I mean, they came back marveling. They said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Remember that? So, I mean, he wanted them to use their, the, the authority that he had given them in his name and they didn't do it. So as we hear from God and we step out and the devil attacks, yes, Jesus is there with us and let's lean on him certainly and let's let's call on him and so on and so forth. But but uh, let me let me just say this, you know, it I've never said this before. If Jesus would have been needed on the deck of that ship, he wouldn't have been asleep on that pillow. Now I've never said that before in my life. I've never heard anybody else say it. That just came up by the Holy Spirit there. But you think about it, it's the absolute truth. If Jesus would have needed to be on the deck of that ship, he would have been. He wasn't there. He was asleep. What does that imply? The disciples could have handled that situation through faith in his name and, 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 and the authority that he'd commissioned them with. Well, I think that's pretty good, isn't it? I think that's pretty good. I'd like to say that again. If he'd have been needed on the, if he knew that he needed to be up on the deck of that ship, he'd have been there. Why was he asleep on the pillow? Because he knew that those disciples could handle that situation. They could have stopped the wind and the, and the sea themselves with the authority in his name. Now, a lot of times you say that, I say that religious people, people that don't really understand faith and authority, they'll, they'll start running around, you know, like chickens with their heads cut off, you know, how did, how could he say that? How could he say that? Well, those folks just don't understand anything about, about the name of Jesus and faith and authority. Okay. That's interesting. That's really good. I learned something right there. Yeah. He didn't need to be out there. They could have done it. That's why he rebuked them. Okay. I mean, he was sleeping. Jesus was very busy. You know, if you've been following us on Sunday mornings at all, he was busy. He was asleep. His sleep was precious. And uh, anyway, but uh, he commissioned them to do it. Don't expect Jesus to do for you what he's already commissioned you to do, to do in his name. And, uh, but of course, he's gracious and, uh, and he helped them here, certainly. But I want to tell you this, there'll come a time if you don't develop and use your faith that he will, he will, now this is going to sound hard, but he will let you go under and he will let you sink Absolutely, and you'll not make it to the other side. You'll not ultimately be successful in the endeavor that God has for you if you don't learn to stand on your own two feet and exercise the authority that he's given you. How can I prove that? Because if you go into Mark, the sixth chapter, two chapters over, the disciples were in another similar situation on the lake there, you know, and the storm was raging and uh, they were about to sink and in jeopardy again. Because the Lord had told them to go over to the other side. Only this time he wasn't with them. He stayed back on the, on the land and he was praying and so forth. That's when he came walking on the water. Remember that? And uh, the Bible says in Mark 6, 48, read it in the King James Version, and he would have passed them by. Now you think about that. They're about to sink out there and he would have passed them by. Now there's much I could say about it, but one of the things I will say is that I, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced. That, that he expected them to do something about the storm. 
And that's one of the reasons why I think he would have passed him by. Well, you think about that. I preached a message one time. It was my mother's favorite message that I ever preached. Don't let Jesus pass you by. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's close this up. Mark the fifth chapter, verse one. Then they came to the other side of the sea. Well, see, they made it, didn't they? They made it to the other side of the sea. So they heard from God. They launched out in, you know, they launched out. Certainly it took faith. They launched out. The devil hit them. They had some issues there, but uh, but they 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 got in jeopardy. But thank God, you know, they made it to the other side. And I tell you what, if you'll do the things we've talked about here tonight, you'll make it to the other side too. You'll be successful in life. Okay. But I want to say this. Watch this. They came to the other side to the sea uh, to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes. Now watch this. Now they made it to the other side. Success in life, okay? They made it to the other side. They completed this project. <sighs> and uh, watch this. When, when he'd come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Why did I read that? Well, listen to this. When you get to the other side, when you make it in life, so to speak, there will always be something else to deal with. I know around the house here, you know, I, I finish a project and I'm just so glad it's done. And then my wife will say, you know what? We need to take care of thus and so. And, all right. So then we get that done. And, and she's a great wife, but I'm just kind of being humorous here. You know, I get that done. And then she'll say, well, now, uh, you know, maybe two days later. Well, now, you know, we need to take care of that. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I mean, there's always going to be something else. Okay. And so, so when they got to the other side, now they got a demon, de demoniac to deal with, you know, but Jesus was there and he took care of that, but, uh, and he'll take care of those things for us, but praise God, uh, there'll always be something else, won't there? But anyway, hey, I hope you got something out of this tonight. Hey, hear from God, find out what his plan for your life is, launch out in faith, expect the devil's attack, stay out of self-pity, and then Refuse to, to, to react based on fear, but react in faith. Rebuke the devil and resist him in Jesus' name and, and, and just, just continue on to do what God told you to do. And it won't be easy, you know, but you'll get to the other side and you'll rejoice and, uh, and, and others will see you and they'll, they'll, uh, it'll witness to them and, and, uh, and God will be glorified, okay? So, and to God be all the glory. So again, I hope you got something out of this tonight. Don't forget Pastor Diane's message. Boy, she's doing some great, great teaching on Wednesday evening. Just fantastic stuff. And, uh, and then uh, Sunday morning, we're going to continue with Jesus's Healing Crusades. Okay, Summit Church, 10 a.m. So, hey, God bless you. Looks like I went, what, about 53 minutes. So I hope it was worth your time. I trust that it was. All right, God bless you. Bye-bye.